Hello again, everyone. Zag Attack is here with the attack line for this Thursday, March the 13th, 2014. All right. Let's kick it off with some news coming from the South by Southwest Music Festival in Austin, Texas. Well, until this morning, South by Southwest have been going briskly with great performances at the iTunes Festival from Coldplay on Tuesday and last night being Kendrick Lamar's show. As well as same song stage, including Jay Z and Kanye performing there, and Spandau Ballet performing, and a lot of great people were performing, and things were going well, and of course, everyone was and still looking forward to tonight's events, including Lady Gaga. But that will all go on. Everything will go on despite a tragedy that happened earlier this morning. As early this morning, a car accident happened as a car plowed into the crowd at South by Southwest. Killing two people and 23 injured. The driver of the car was booked on two counts of capital murder and multiple counts of aggravated assault. I think his name was revealed, but it was not mentioned in this report that I'm reading off of right now. That the incident occurred shortly after 12.30 a.m. when police attempted to stop a motorist suspected of driving while intoxicated at a gas station. The driver sped off, said Austin Police Chief Art Acovito. And broke through a barricade. Tens of thousands of people descended upon Austin for South by Southwest, and many of the streets are closed only to pedestrian traffic. As like I said, then the car headed down the wrong way on a one way street that was crowded with music revelers. And it struck a cyclist, a moped, a taxi, and a van. Fatal injuries were sustained by the man on the bike and the woman on the moped. Those are the two that were dead. Sadly, of thoughts and prayers and condolences go out to the friends and family affected by these deaths at South by Southwest. Like I said, the events from today, some got canceled today, some are going on, including Lady Gaga's performance tonight on the Dorito stage. So there you go, South by Southwest, show must go on, despite a tragedy that happened earlier this morning. Thoughts to everybody down in Austin affected by it. So there you go, thoughts to you. Now, let's continue on with some rap news on uh, Little Wayne. Rappers are South by Southwest, like I mentioned. Kendrick Lamar's down there, and so is Jay Z and Kanye, but not Lil Wayne. But there's some news on Lil Wayne and his upcoming album, The Carter Five. Now, there was rumors flying, I even sent on an attack line a few weeks ago, that his album is set for a May 5th release. Now, the release date is not revealed yet, officially confirmed by Lil Wayne, but he has said on an interview, as his compilation album comes out from his record label, Young Money. They're saying there's new album that The Carter Five is his last album as a solo artist. Saying that I personally plan on this album being my last solo album and the final Carter album for sure, according to MTV in an interview that Lil Wayne conducted with them. That he's stopping at five. Unless there's a lot of money. That he says he may make another album. He may be convinced to record another album after this if he sells a lot of copies. 25 to 30 mil. As he's saying. But till then, Lil Wayne's retiring solo wise with this The Carter Five. He's continuing to do collaborative things with some of his Young Money crew, but not any solo work after this album. So The Carter Five, still yet to be officially announced for May 5th, but it will be Lil Wayne's final solo album until. Notice. Well, Lil Wayne's album's yet to be confirmed. There is a confirmed album release set. For June the 3rd, but it's not anything new, it's reissues. Uh, Led Zeppelin, this year is the 45th anniversary of their debut album, Led Zeppelin 1 and Led Zeppelin 2. In honor of their 45th anniversary, they're releasing, reissuing, their first three albums on CD and vinyl. Led Zeppelin's 1, 2, and 3. Now the albums will be including B-sides and compilate and new and new live songs and a previously unreleased song, Jenny Farm Blues. A lot of new, a lot of new outtakes and demos of the albums. Now we released in several formats the new reissues. It will be two LPs or two CDs. And then it'll all come together in a super deluxe box set with both CD and vinyl together. 
with Led Zeppelin 1, including a live concert, Led Zeppelin 2, and Led Zeppelin 3, including outtakes and demos. And Led Zeppelin 3 will include unreleased Jennings Fall Blues, and Led Zeppelin 2 will include unreleased La La song. Now, there was a lot of uh, interest in this. I've read that Jimmy Page has been booking this reissue. So now they're all coming out with new stuff. This is the first big reissues of their albums. You know, they've done some compilations, but never reissues of albums, including bonus tracks and all that, and having the big, lavish deluxe edition with a big book included and in LP releases and all that. So it'll be very interesting for Leadheads out there with Led Zeppelin reissuing their albums, the first three albums, on June the 3rd. Now, on the topic of classic 60s rockers, uh, today they unveiled the stamp. Uh, Jimi Hendrix is getting a stamp. I like the stamp. I saw it today. It was unveiled. Of course, it's selling at all the local post offices across the country, USPS services, and of course, online and all that. Now, Hendrix's stamp, of course, he had to be dead to be a stamp. Uh, he's the first of many upcoming classic rock stamps, including a Jerry Lennon stamps coming, Janis Joplin Jan uh, stamp, and the reissue of the classic 1993 Elvis stamp. But the Jimi Hendrix stamp is like a drawing of him. It's kind of a cool drawing of him that gets off. You know, it's a cool little drawing of a stamp. On the stamp, it's cool. Cool little stamp. I may buy it. Only 59, 49 cents for one stamp, but they'll probably be like collector stuff, like editions, like a book or something, or like a lithograph of it. So you can probably find that stuff out on the United States Postal Service website. So there you go. Led Zeppelin reissuing their first three albums and Jimi Hendrix on a stamp. Now, on um, some TV news. Uh, before I get to my reviews of last night's Modern Family and Wall Booker's episodes, uh, another one of my favorite shows that I don't watch often because it's up against wrestling is Pawn Stars. I do like it though. There was rumors flying this morning that Chumley, one of the stars of the show, died of an apparent heart attack. And there was even like real reports on it that Austin Russell died apparently at 31 years old because of a heart attack despite losing weight. But it was a death hoax. The rumors of death for Chumley is untrue. Even Austin Russell himself, Chumley, Posted on Twitter, may we live long and witch forever. Even Rick Harrison even said something. Who recently appeared in a brand new lip sync version of Jason Derulo's Talk Dirty video with Big Rick. Saying that Chumley is alive and well. He's actually filming today and we all appreciate everyone's concern now. So there you go. Chumley's not dead. So there you go. Glad to hear that about Chumley not being dead and everything. Death hoax. Now on the two TV shows that are not dead as well. Modern Family and Wall Boogers. And last night's Modern Family episode. Another good one about... I think there was always, there's always a theme with Modern Family episodes. And this week's theme was trying to get someone to do something they don't really want to do. Like Haley trying to go on a date that didn't really work out. Because she wants a gentleman. She really fall in love with Andy the Manny. Who plays a guy on the workaholic show on Comedy Central. Trying to make a video for his somewhat girlfriend in the Coast Guard. And maybe there could be a relationship with Andy and Haley growing. Especially when Haley was helping Andy with his video. And uh, they're trying to pick up bridal dresses for uh, uh, Lily. Because her dads are getting married. I'm guessing the season finale is going to be Kim and Mitch's wedding. That's what I'm predicting right now. So, a lot of fun things in the episode. And many of them, Manny and Alex and all of them going to the museum. And having some fun there. And uh, Luke building stuff. Maybe we want to take a shot to hit on women. According to his grandfather's tips. Of course, Big Bundy and Bundy. Al Bundy, and of course, Jan and Michelle. So, fun and little little family last night. Of course, 9 o'clock on Wednesdays. And uh, also, Walt Bookers was on last night. Back to back episodes, and Suck Dynasty took the week off. So, it was two episodes. I liked the 10 o'clock episode when they were trying to play a prank on Paul, the chef, by writing a jingle. Everyone was getting involved in Johnny Johnny Drama, Johnny Drama writing his own jingle in a rap. That was funny. Well, Bill Goods, not just extreme. I like Joe Wall, uh, Joey Max, Joey McIntyre's little jingle. Walt Bookers, like a big band style. That was funny. It was all a big joke in the end. 
But everyone was so serious about the joke because everyone was like, I don't want my jingle. It's a joke, but I want them to use my jingle though. And trying to find a gift for Jenny's birthday, of course, Donnie's girlfriend. And then we had the second episode, which was about Paul's 50th birthday and meeting his idol on a day with Mark and his, uh, Donnie in his old car, the weapon of his old car. And it was a fun episode as well. I liked both episodes. Of Wall Burgers, of course, we'll be back on his regular time at 10 30 next week. With the return of Dr. Jane. On the Annie, of course. That is it. For the attack live for the day. See you all later. With that in mind, you've all been attacked. By the news, folks, Zach. Thank you for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody. See ya. Yeah.